I mean, like Discord's like a bunch of crazy noise and madness for my boomer brain, but I was just surprised when I, I've sat in on a couple of those where how fast people have answers for that stuff. It's like really fast. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I can't even compete anymore because you all just, I don't know, your words per minute are just insane. And I don't know. I really don't know how people do it. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a speed row. <laughs> Somebody yes, in the yeah, he's really fast. A lot of you are really fast. I, I can't, I really can't compete. But anyway, it's really fun. And if you think that um, if you're a trivia master and you can type really fast, come on in. <laughs> Okay, um, this Friday, five, uh, February the 23rd, we have our watch party for Karate Combat's KC44 event. This is going to be a really big one. Not only are they having all of the regular matches with the world champs, but they have also partnered with the Influencer Fight Club and there will be uh, matches with influencers like, hang on, I, I don't know their names, uh, Ben Armstrong and Crypto Crow and NFT Kid. We'll come back to that in a second. But um, yeah, it's going to be a star-studded event and we are streaming it of course through brave talk at our watch party um, previously we mentioned that you would need to get the kc44 po app in order to join the watch party but i don't think we are going to do that just to avoid um, any confusion but you will still be able to pick up the lovely kc44 uh, po app that guillerme designed in the bat brigade discord so uh, be sure to collect that if you like that kind of thing. And otherwise, join us for the watch party. We are going to be streaming um, Crypto Dojo's YouTube channel stream where he will be giving live fight commentary. Uh, you guys know him. He's been on previous calls here, but he's one of our bad ambassadors. He's also a martial artist, very into karate. So um, yeah, we'll be streaming the fight in the background and then have a little window with Crypto Dojo giving live commentary. And of course, we are always chatting in the chat box in Brave Talk throughout the event. And uh, we'll have bat token and karate token prizes as well for participation. So join us. It's a lot of fun. And then here's just a screenshot of the Crypto Influencer Fight poster. So I don't know if any of y'all are fans of these folks, but they will be competing. And on the left-hand side here is uh, Crypto Dojo's um, live that is already up. And that's the link that we'll be streaming through Brave Talk. But don't worry about that. Just uh, save the Brave Talk link from our announcement tweets pinned on our Twitter. And we'll be retweeting it between now and then. So you won't be able to miss it. Let's see. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. This is really exciting, you guys. Um, we hit 20,000 followers officially on the Bat Community account. We had been plateauing for the longest time at 16,000. And actually, we're at like 20.1 thousand now. Uh, so that's awesome. And this is due to an increased uh, frequency uh, with posting and content diversity over the past month and a half. Um, and in addition, like I mentioned in previous weeks, we've been running a, a brave push notification campaign as well in several regions, five or six different regions. And we're gonna be swapping out the regions every couple of months um, so that our users who maybe don't know that we have social media um, will discover and come follow us. And so it's been clearly been paying off and uh, yeah, we're at 20, 0.1k followers now which we're really happy about and thank halfway you to, to 40 everyone. halfway to 40 love it halfway, oh yeah halfway to 40. <laughs> Yay. and uh these are just some numbers from social blade so the last time we checked in and i showed you these numbers we were up 173 percent with our uh, tweet volume over the the past 30 days at that point and today um you know that number is much higher. We have uh, 205 tweets for the past for from over the past 30 days, and our tweet intensity has gone up um, by 286.8 percent, which is great. Um, and I will share stats for the attention token account next time. This is for the community account. All right, I'm going to hand it off to Paula now. Our from Mexico was at the ETH Cinco de Mayo Hackathon from North in Puebla, Mexico. There were from different countries, 50 projects, 
over 50k USD also 20 communities including bad mexico of course the event um was focused on onboarding new developers and enthusiasts where participants learn smart contracts and the development that challenges and participants had the opportunity to basic to advanced levels covering topics such as security and smart contracts development of user interfaces for dApps in was with projects creating and working and also included activityship where participants were able to explore educations and improve and low the Bad Mexico team engaged in different activities spreading brave awareness among attendees and they gave away some merch such as stickers and hats and as a result of that we got more than 11 downloads as well as referral QR code plus the downloads that people made from search and break by themselves and lastly the most frequently asked questions were related to break playlists which is not a surprise at all. could as um youtube premium and then Donatello and the team helped them set it up on this next. Pictures for you can see Donatello and some team members during um, the sessions and also people wearing hats and stickers. So before representing very bad, it's simple Next slide, please. So right now, at this same time, Zcash Brazil and Bad Ambassadors hosting a space on X with Zcash. This event is an exciting collaboration between Bad Brave Brazil and Zcash's Brazilian community. And their discussion will be focused on online privacy and this space is, of course, so if you speak the language, feel free to leave the recording later. And that's all for my. Thanks, Paola. You were cutting in and out a little bit, but hopefully you all got the gist. Um, actually, the space with Bruno is going on right now, I believe. So um, yeah, probably if you're here, you won't be able to tune in, but there will be a recording if you speak Portuguese and you want to tune in. But thank you so much, Paola. Okay, handing it off to Drew. Hey, <clears throat> all right, yeah, so I think maybe it was mentioned that we got VeChain this Friday, so that should be a good one. Um, and Jenny, uh, Luke says we should use the uh, bad account on that, but um, we'll discuss that later, I guess. Ah! <laughs> Throwing it out. <laughs> Target there at a minimum, I in, think. In public, no, I'm just kidding. Um, We'll figure it out, but uh, either way is fine. So V Chain, thanks to Crypto Dojo on that one too, kind of hooking us up there. Um, they're excited to chat with us, and, and should be good. And then um, the next week we also have a space with um, Zcash, uh, just like the Bruno and the Brazil uh, accounts are doing. Uh, we'll be doing that too, and also I think uh, should be coinciding with some stuff coming there, I think, if, if that's not already been mentioned, I think it was. Um, and then our karate combat stuff is ending up today. So hopefully I'll get the stuff from Bannon and we can send those out uh, to the wallet so you guys have it and, in time for this week's event to be able to vote and things like that. So, And then, of course, as always, we're working on <clears throat> a number of other Kind of partnerships and things that we're looking at doing uh both with bandit and beyond so um lots lots going on it's super excited for kind of what's to come here in the pipeline i think that's all i got thanks jenny okay let me just start by saying that drew's skills on making slides is actually improving because at the beginning it was asking me to do the slides and it was actually killing me the slides that were actually fantastic <laughs> nice job, Drew. <laughs> Improving by the day. <laughs> Drew. I see you in chat. 
I'm just going to give a quick update on Echo. Um, I don't think I've provided good updates on the last community calls. However, I got something that is pretty big uh, for the upcoming weeks. So basically, we changed direction. So instead of having articles from different projects within Web3 uh, right for Echo, we are going to review some Web3 games and have them directly able to play from the PDF that will be attached to the NFT. So in, within your browser, you'll be able to click the marquee, such as ev.io, defyland, pixels, and you'll be able to open a different browser, sorry, not in a different browser, Jesus, but in a different tab, uh, the game. So that'd be cool. Um, so that'll be the new direction that'll be following, but we'll still be able to feature an article from Xborg and from the general Royale that will be right in the beginning. Um, regarding distribution, we are currently in talks with Drip House, as we would love to keep it within Drip House and just find a new model and keep doing things within Drip. Um, but we're exploring other ways and we're exploring other partners to see if we're able to distribute within our other chains and even in Solana in other ways that just could make sense and could offer a little bit more. Uh, it's something that we're exploring. For the release date, we don't have a set deadline yet. But as a placeholder, for everyone's sake, we're placing it at uh, 20th of March. That's it for my end. Guillermo. Thank you, Guillermo. That was great. Um, and then not to end on a not so fun note, but there is, uh, well, there are always scams kind of circulating, but there is one going around right now. Uh, it's an email kind of like phishing scam that's um, promoting this fake uh you know bat air or brave airdrop program so uh you know just be advised that that is a scam and be on the lookout stay vigilant um and if you see anything that looks suspicious please report it to us either on twitter or here um yeah thank you awesome Back great job great job you guys like uh these decks are really fantastic and like it's just uh, i'm super excited for echo i think that um the drip guys are doing great too i know it's really exciting stuff and uh thank you all for putting it all together um yeah as far as other updates go i think um some of us are going to eat denver coming up so we're getting ready for that if any of you all are going to be in denver uh let us know and we can meet up in real life um uh, we also have um, released uh, our first two episodes of the latest season of the Braid Technologist podcast that I host. It, um, the second one came out last week. We actually had the um, uh, what was it the the lead uh, author on the uh, EU AI Act on the podcast. Like somehow, Angelina and our team's just been getting some really amazing guests. And then the first episode was Austin Campbell too. Like. Um, uh, check it out though if you if you guys haven't checked it out already and share it around if you feel like it um but uh recorded three more episodes last week have a couple more to go uh, and the guests are really awesome one of them's like works on this uh, self-driving uh or autonomous big rig trucking company project and some other stuff it's, it's pretty good stuff so um uh, i think it's on brave.com slash uh, podcast uh, for anyone that's not familiar but um give that a look um Cyber the space is on Friday uh, with with Zcash. Um, if you guys haven't seen that on Nightly, uh, we have Zcash integrated, um, and so um, take a look at that too if you want. Um, that's what I got. I, we can open the floor up, or if anybody else has any updates they want to share, please do. Anybody? Did you just open it up, Luke? Oh, I opened it up, Drew. Oh, okay. I was just going to ask, like, what's, um, you know, what's usually the vibe for uh, East Denver? I mean, is it uh, pretty geeked out, like, um, dabs and stuff, or, like, what's kind of the vibe there? Oh, yeah. No, that's a good question. That's one that, that has some history, too. I think, um, what, Jenny, we went in, what, 2018 back then? Yeah, we went in 2018. It was actually my first event with Brave. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like and, a month after I started. Um, and the Wi Fi didn't work there. And yeah. <laughs> it was like folding tables and like a pretty hardcore developer crowd, but but it was cool. Um, 
and then what last year i think they're holding it someplace where they do rodeos and stuff um next to a dog food plant so you can smell dog food outside which is uh interesting uh, i don't know if they're doing it there this year um i don't recall but um it, it's good it's, they had like a lot of projects there a lot of people from the youth community are there um it's it's not like hardcore like dev focused as much as it used to be um but you can see you can definitely like go there check things out they have a last year they had like four different stages um with content uh and things ranging from like super technical stuff to like um how to get mainstream folks in on board and, and other types of like community oriented things um so it's definitely like if you haven't been it's worth going to it's one of the ones that are worth going to i think it's not like something like a smaller scale one it, it's definitely gotten bigger um and i think the the bathrooms work there um they didn't work yeah. in, in 2018 as, as well but um it's all good hey that first that we went oh no go ahead drew no 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 go ahead Jen. i was just gonna uh, ask if um in 2018 when we went that time luke was that the first was that when our uh, the brave team first hacked on crypto wallets yeah which, yeah which you know now is has evolved into the brave wallet yeah it's pretty awesome there's actually like a deeper story there too like um when the eth waterloo which was the fall so in 2018 we went it was february ish um and uh in the fall previously in uh 2017 there was eth waterloo where i think it was um, a bunch of folks from the team were there anthony and uh a few others were there hacking on getting metamask to preload in brave and then yeah like yanzu and um uh, uh evie and a couple other folks from our team that are still here actually um went to eth denver that February and then they it was the first iteration of um of the crypto wallet in Brave, which was a fork of MetaMask that we natively put in the browser as a proof of concept kind of thing for the hackathon. Um Evie did that with Evie uh with Jan and a couple other people. I think Ayumi maybe was there. Um and uh yeah, it, it was yeah, then what was it like a year or two later? the actual fork was in the browser and then a year or two later after that we have our native wallet in the browser it's kind of cool um, even before and, that marshall rose had the bitcoin wallet in the browser though oh wow that's awesome um like anything in particular you guys are looking to you know kind of do during this year's uh conference or um kind of just going to go and, and connect with you know whoever you connect with kind of thing have a bunch of meetings that are scheduled like carlos and i are both going to be there um and there's some other folks that are going to be there too um we have a bunch of meetings and networking things that we're we're going to do i normally do like a speaking engagement but i'm not doing it there this year um, mainly because of time and um other things going on but uh what i'm thing i'm really looking into like last year we, we went around and it was definitely like all about kind of infrastructure and l2s and things like that um and so i'm interested to see if this year it'll focus more on usability and users and like last year when i was there they they had the big um account abstraction announcement happen while we were there but um you know it, it'll be interesting to see if things are still kind of in infrastructure airdrop mode or if, if things are going to start to pivot more towards usability which i think it needs to but anyway I don't know. Um, uh, there's a bunch of things happening around the event too that, that should be interesting. Cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Now, you got a hand up? Yes. Uh, I had a couple things. Um, first, I was wanting to know um, when will we get the option to sort Brave Search news by like recency and stuff like that? Because uh, I know there's some, that's like one of the things that uh, causes me to have to go over to a different search engine. Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. I don't know when, I don't know if anybody from the search teams on this call, I don't think that they are, but we should go back to the team and find out because I actually just ran into the same thing yesterday when I was looking up some new stuff in Brave Search and I couldn't find it either and I wanted it there. So good call out. Um, also, any updates on any of the items reported uh, in the wallet feedback spreadsheet that was shared with Brave? 
Uh, yeah, so I serviced a bunch of them to the team. Um, I I need to get some additional. Like I need, there were a few different ones there, and I don't want to step on which ones are which status. So let me take a look at those and get back to the group on that. Hey, on on that. Um, so today I did another little tweet where, you know, I was sending out some SPL bat to people. Um, I think we crossed 600 holders on Solana. So, of course, that's going to change big time here soon. But um, I think it was giving me issues in the Brave wallet, like with the um, like the names, you know, like we're like the, you know, like Drew's your uncle dot soul or whatever. Like it was, I think it worked once and then the other times it, it didn't work, but it was working on, you know, other wallets. So I don't know if that's an issue you need to maybe add to that uh, bounce yeah drew i think we got a shared doc we can have you add that to you there okay yeah if you don't have access to it just send me a dm Drew. yeah i'm, uh, I'm uh, but i'll probably just dm you okay sounds okay. good yeah and if others are interested in joining we have like a small like a test group that we have of folks that are helping us to troubleshoot and identify uh, wallet bugs and issues and, and other irregularities and stuff. Um, if anybody wants to get involved there, uh, hit me up um, or uh, hit up anybody else that's talking about it. I think mobile gaming as it is right now is actually pretty boring. I don't think that there's many disruptors. You know, you have super... Somebody, uh, let me get in here. I need a... All right, we'll fix that one. Anita, you had your, your mic on, but uh, no worries there. Uh, who has a hand up now? Let's see here. Yeah, so that was me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how's it going, what man? I wanted to say is actually when we were talking about Brave Search, are you guys literally talking about just being able to sort like newest to oldest? Or I was going to point out that there is the option to be able to uh, do it like past day, past week, and so on. Baz, are, were you specifically trying to find uh, news up to a certain date or something like that? I mean, I'm going to go into my phone right now and type it, but if I search that, go to news, yeah, I was, customization, all it shows me is United States and safe search. Yeah, that's what I was seeing too. Oh, okay. Yeah, on the news tab. I guess I was looking at all, so cool. Oh, at least yeah, I understand yeah, yeah. what you guys were mentioning, yeah. Yeah, so like I think I think it probably has to do with like specific uh, with the way the index is is um, for filtering for news. It probably is just some subset of uh, the news tag queries or something like I, I don't know. Like, um, but we can we, I can check with the team on when they think that feature uh, is is going to land. It does the same thing for images and videos as well, and also right. that reminds me. Um, to remind you that for whatever reason, if you go into like open up a private instance of Brave, you don't have the option to connect to the build in VPN, which is kind of a strange choice. I mean, you can still use it if you have a regular version of Brave open and open the VPN before you go into a private browser and instance. I don't know, that's just kind of like a oddity. That okay, so, so let me just double check on that. So the private windows do not have the VPN button. Yeah, at least on mobile. No, yeah, that's a good. That's good. I, I'll, I'll submit that one too. I'm just taking notes while we're while we're going here. Um, um, let me double check on the. Yeah, I don't think it has it on desktop either. Okay. I've never before that before, but. Okay, cool. I know Yaka mentioned for Mac OS as well on private browsing. Awesome. I will run those ones up too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Aaron Yaka just confirmed that too in the chat. Okay, good. Thanks, guys. Um, you have a hand up too, Aaron Yaka. Do you have a question? Yeah. Um, just got a question. Is there any fixes uh, coming up for? <clears throat> um, using Leo Premium on the, the desktop version of macOS. I just find that whenever I use it, there tends to be like an automatic Brave desktop browser crash. 
and it just completely just like closes everything and I have to reopen it. And this has been go ongoing since um, since I've had uh, Leo Premium for, I think it's like a couple months now. Um, so it's just crashing. When are you specifically getting the crash on that one? Um, just like, I have some videos I sent you like through an email and oh got it okay uh, yeah 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 i remember that yeah yeah, okay. yeah i think i resent it to you as well luke thanks guy i will uh i'll, I'll send those up and, and see if i can get an update on that that that's something that we need to absolutely fix okay thank you yeah yeah no that's great let's see here um it might also see your so I see you see you're saying it hasn't seen that on community. If it's specific to premium, it might just be that um, a smaller subset of premium users on on the uh, Leo product because it's pretty new still. It could be that we're it might just be like uh, uh, more we we buy users like uh, by OS like Windows and Android are the, the biggest, and so um, there there are quite a few on Mac OS, but. Um, it's still significantly smaller than, than windows. So we might just have not had enough folks run into that yet, but uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good I, I'm not quite sure if the, the instance instances of it uh, crashing is also related to the VPN usage. Uh, it may be like a little placebo effect, but I think if I have VPN on the crash comes more immediate. Oh, good point. Okay. I'll add a note for that too. Um, up here to be okay cool thanks um how bullish is uh 40 asks uh or 40 asks uh how bullish is on chain payouts um i think it's uh, very i can give you some reasons why um i'm pretty bullish about it one um i think it kind of finishes out um like we always wanted it to be on chain from the early days even um or even when we were doing the white paper um but more practically speaking it's going to open up a lot of regions that were uh disabled by the custodians right like so um i, I think that that the immediate thing that gets me excited about it is just how much more um access people will have to brave rewards uh that uh, we may have been um, having, you know, users that may have been using it um, uh, regularly that we, you know, might have churned out or might be willing to give it a second shot after um, we add an option for them to settle that's in their, that's supported in their region. I think like that's a really exciting part. Um, I think, you know, also uh, more broadly, I mean, like, where we have a self custody wallet in every browser, but more more generally than that, even um, just uh, making the settlement open for self custody wallets is like a huge step in the right direction. Um, as far as you know, self custody is one of those real important um, principles that you know user first principles that's out there. So I think that, that that's awesome. Um, and it just cuts out steps um, too. So BAT can get more active in ecosystems. Um, we can have more users uh, getting those settlements and, and then open up more on-chain uh, option, opportunities for utility with BAT from those that are don't involve having to go through custodians. And custodians will be there for folks that want it. But I, I think, you know, 2024 is the year that we bring these things on chain and, uh, and, you know, start to get it, rekindle more, more, more conversations with um, wallet partners about things we can do with bat. And we can say, look like, you know, we're opening up, you know, so that folks with self custody can settle direct. Cause um, you know, it's been kind of a pain point. So um, I'm excited about that. Um, and uh, more and more people utilizing bat as a result. Um, and more and more people holding that as a result. Uh, and there's only 1.5 billion bat and, um, you know, Chrome's 2.65 billion users. Uh, Brave's not even at 100 million monthly active users yet. And almost all of that supply is circulating. So I don't know if you guys can do some math and, and, and see how few bat someone needs to hold if we even hit half a scale. Hope that's helpful. Um, someone's got a hand up. Crippled resistance, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good, good to hear you. Good, thank you, thank you, you too. Oh, oh, 
I was just wondering, oh, I got a notification from, from LinkedIn the other day that, that Brave was hiring. Is this true? Um, I think we're for certain roles, people we, we're hiring. Um, it, yeah, I go to brave.com slash careers. There's all the job recs are there for people that might be interested. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll have like a regional sales opening right now or something like that. That makes uh, that, that sounds about right, I think. Um, but that's the page to go to find any open open jobs. Well, I thought I thought it was kind of interesting that it was on LinkedIn. That's all. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah. I well, I think too. Like for for that type of role, especially um, if you go check out, like like LinkedIn's probably a good uh, place to target. Thank you. Yeah, it's more bullish than layoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any questions or want to talk about anything? Before? Um, I'll let uh, no, no, go, go, go ahead, friend. Go ahead, friend. Okay. Uh, I just got a question. Is Hedera Wallet uh, natively supported on Brave? I know like uh, the Brave has been partnerships with Kar uh, Karate Combat. Just wondering if it is. Yeah. So Karate Combat has, they have, there's like an EVM supported uh, network that they can transact on. And then they also have like some ways to hook in uh, with the uh, JSON to, that will let you do things like token gating without the native support. Um, but, uh, but Brave Wallet doesn't have Hedera support natively um, in, in the wallet. But I don't know, Drew or um, Jenny, what what folks are doing or, about that with karate with some of these uh, quests and things. Yeah, the probably the easiest thing is just download the karate app. It'll have a Hedera wallet there as well that you can use um, to like vote on the fights and stuff if you're wanting to do all that. But it also has a wallet, so it's probably easiest at this point until maybe someday in the future when we have it in the Brave wallet. But yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Guillermo, you you uh, you were uh, about to have a question too. Yeah, it, it's more of a fun question. I remember that some time ago we were talking about uh, being in exploration, uh, a browser for the TV. So basically, brave support on the TV. Is that something that is still being explored, just experimented with? Uh, I know like they were testing it out, um, but I think it's, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's active on that front right now. Uh, right now there's a bunch of work going on around on-chain stuff around Leo and, and around a bunch of retention and other types of fixes. And, um, for what it's worth too, I think one thing I neglected to mention, but I wanted to mention, cause it's, it's kind of cool too. The, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen on Android, like, the team did a bunch of like performance work and cut down the download size down from like, I think it was like 233 megs or something down to like 140 or something ridiculously lower. Um, so like a bunch of performance improvement works been going on underway there too. Um, uh, but uh, yeah. So uh, as far as like exploration on TV, I know another thing folks wanted to do was get like wide vine support on mobile and things like that. But um Mostly what I've been seeing around that's like questions around Chromecast and stuff and casting from Brave to television, but not in TV browser stuff that I'm aware of. But I could be wrong. I, there could be something going on with Retrush or something that I'm missing. Um, yeah. Bows, do you have a hand up? I do. And I'm pretty sure I completely. Oh, I remember what it was. Um, and I might have brought this up in the past. I can't recall. But has Brave considered, you know, maybe trying to do some of the stuff with like uh, cash back that some of these other companies do? Yeah, so I think more about. Yeah, like we're looking at that, um, and, and also like other reward options too. Um, we've talked about Quest here. I think it, it, these things kind of get into the realm of like uh, what we're trying to we have this merchant program that we started too, right? Like I think the cashback stuff's interesting. 
um, doing stuff that relates to e-commerce makes sense from a browser. Uh, there's some stuff we've tried in the past there um, with existing uh, parties that have systems like that, um, that required some privacy work. But I think that um, it's an area where we're definitely looking into right now because you kind of see too, like with uh, search, um, most search engines have like a shopping tab or whatever, but especially too with like Leo, right? Like um, these are things where uh, where shopping and, uh, and, and you know, shopping rewards programs or things like that are, are definitely um, interesting on that front. And I think getting bat back makes sense. I think a lot of this comes down to like, okay, like, um, where you get where are you sourcing the bat back from in that process but um there's ways that people can do that too but but yeah like it, it's something we're looking into um or even if it's not done directly uh i mean there are some players already out there that you know are doing that with crypto so yeah we've we've talked with three different partners on it um at different stages um over the past couple of years um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, there's a high level of interest in it, in, in going in that direction. I think because e-commerce is so popular in browsers and, um, for some of the other reasons I mentioned too, um, I think it'd be great. I mean, like it, it, it's just like browsing and, and earning, like, um, purchasing and earning, right. Like is, uh, is, is a good vertical because you're getting deeper in the funnel with everything. And it's one of those things why I'm like stoked about like quests too, is it's like, these are, the deeper you go in the funnel with with engagement rewards, the better the quality of the user is usually um, on these things, uh, especially if there are certain tasks that are relevant in that the brand wants, um, or in this case, a merchant or, you know, whatever, right? Like it, every everything like that is just another reason for them to like, you know, buy ads or, or have uh, some type of partnership with us in some way. Let's see here. See, right. Yeah, so definitely had a couple things on my mind. When you were talking about the Android uh, file uh, size decreasing, mm -hmm. uh, that actually brought in, there's been a repeat conversation ever so often hitting like Reddit or community, and that would be about Brave having a light version. Uh, mm -hmm. People wanting to be able to have Brave without like wallet or rewards or whatever, you know, just the most basic uh, Brave. Is that anything that ever would be considered it's been discussed i think there are some different types of like loading strategies too that the team is currently working on so there's like this big size reduction we just had another way uh that you can also do it is to like basically fetch certain resources as they're being requested so like you almost like having a light version of something in the browser but then you know having the actual resources load for it when you need it like for wallet or something like that. Um, but uh, maybe we should have Anthony come on and talk about this a bit. But I think like for the meantime, if we can cut the size down without having to go with a light version, it's better. Like because you're you're getting a higher conversion rate globally anyway without having to like uh, fragment the user base into a light set of users and a main set of users, right? Like um, so uh, yeah, I mean, there's been some discussion around it, but um, I wouldn't rule it out fully, but I think for the near future, the best win for us is to try and just cut the main app size down. Right, which I don't need, um... I mean, I'm speaking even on desktop, all of that, but where a lot of them have argued is they're trying to say that Brave is forcing this on people and that it's opt out and everything should be opt in. And that if it's already part of Brave without them choosing to install it or something, that we're forcing an opt out situation and how they're peed off because even though they can hide the icon off of like the browser, if they go into settings, it's still there. So, I mean, you're always going to have somebody at the extremes like that. But I figured yeah. I'd ask since it's come up multiple times by various accounts. Yeah, no. And, and people have like uh, pretty strong opinions, too, on on certain things like crypto, Web3 related stuff and, and AI and other things like that. Um, but I think like if we're really kind of building software that is kind of on the leading edge of things, we the web's big and it, it encompasses a lot of things um, and having access for supporting those things is important. Um, I don't think it's opt out. Uh, it's for the most part, I mean, like these things, 
you have to invoke them to use them. Um, and uh, we're not running things for them without the user knowing, like basically like, you know, that part of the, the process gets run through before the code ships. Um, and uh, it's, um, you know, all those checks are in place to do that. I, I can see why people might interpret it as that, like, because it's part of the software package, but realistically it's not active in the package unless you're doing that. And it, it just gets messy. Like, okay, like you want to have like, if is web three a part of the bigger web? Yes or no. Well, some people might not want it to be, but the reality is that it is. And, and Brave like has a wallet, but Brave also supports, you know, IPFS and, and those things. If you want to use them, you have to turn them on. But like it, it gets kind of subjective um, when you when you split hairs on it in different directions. And I think that, you know, I see why people get frustrated with it. But I think the the bigger goal is like, uh, OK, well, why would what would aside from somebody that's already strongly opinionated about uh, crypto or web three, like what are the other reasons why someone else might churn? Um, definitely if the app is too big or it bloats too large in parts of the world where bandwidth or, uh, devices with smaller, you know, storage sizes and things like that are a real factor, um, getting those sizes down and, and running more efficiently is like definitely a priority, right? Like, because we're a global product, but, um, yeah, I think on some more of the subjective things, it's it's still like, I mean, people, people, some people will never be happy with these things. Like some people are very upset that we automatically update the browser or or do auto update checks, um, you know, like uh, and, and you see why people get upset. But also, you know, there are reasons why we do these things, too, um, that are, are for you know the broader swath of users. Yeah, I appreciate it. I just knew that was a recent debate. And then I forget how long ago somebody else was complaining that their uh, their company they are actually making them take Brave off of their devices because it includes some of these things. And so they were like, "Hey, I would love to have the light. That way, my company wouldn't complain, and I can actually use Brave. Otherwise, I'm having to remove you." Yeah, no, I totally get that. And, and there's some. Uh, I think that we have like an article or something on enterprise settings that folks can like it admins can do but I, I definitely hear i hear them out like on, on that um yeah and these things are moving targets too um it is interesting like a couple of years ago we used to get blocked a lot on being used at workplaces because we have you know private tabs with tor um and we're not seeing those flags as much these days as we were before so so opinions on these things change too with time but i think we'll see um let's see here all right uh guillermo you had another question and then we can go to our uh it, it's a good follow-up it's not as much of a question as it is a suggestion so for brave search currently we use for the images webp files so whenever you save an image it will be likely on webp which is basically standard on chromium because it was developed by google but what if we explored .avif because as I was reading through it, it, it seems to be a little tiny bit faster, but it does preserve more quality in, of the images and there's less artifacts. So it seems something that is worth exploring. Cool. No, that's a good suggestion. We can send that to the team. Who should I send it to? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I can I can send it up uh, stream or if you if you want to send it to uh, I think there's a search channel. Uh, it's like I'll get that. it through Jenny then. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I just noted it too, but we two 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 fronts. We can we can both submit it. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Arnyaka. Hey, just got a question. Um, I know I I asked this uh, quite some time ago. It's but it's regarding um, Brave being in other official app stores, and the question is like, it, has there been any talks about? Brave being implemented into like any sort of Linux app stores, like um, like the Ubuntu app store or like a Ras Raspberry OS app store. Yeah, I, I we get pings about it occasionally. Um, I know we're not doing like active BD to get there, but we probably should. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think some of these store sizes are pretty big too. Um, it'd be worth a reapproach on that um 
but uh, I'll I'll put a note to the team to take a look at the app store sizes for some of these and and run through it. I know we're not actively doing it mainly because like resources wise, like uh, myself and others on the, the business team are pretty. Um, we got a lot going on uh, that that uh, we're trying to clear. But um, yeah, this is another area that would be good for growth hacking for sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Cause I know whenever I try to like reinstall, um, uh, like, uh, like, uh, the Raspbian OS, um, the only two options is like just pure Chromium, which honestly kind of sucks. And also Firefox. I think if we're able to have another option, uh, within the like Raspbian OS or even Ubuntu, just being able to just go to their official app store install, I think, I think that would be great. I think it's a good idea. Like, and it's a good point too, especially when you look at like, um, what is it? Privacy tools, right? Like uh, where they have the breakouts of all the different uh, default browser settings. And like for forever, everybody was like, well, like Firefox is the way to go for, for these app stores because they're Firefox and they're open source and all that. And we're, we're open source too. Um, and in a lot of cases we have better defaults than they do on privacy too. So I think like um, with all these different proof points in the market now, like it makes for a stronger case. I can do some outreach and see um, if uh, what the appetite's like for that. Okay, yeah, because I just posted in the in the uh, chat about like this other app store called Snapcraft.io. Uh, it does have Brave, but oh, cool. I mean, to to simplify like the install of Brave, I think it would just be great just to go to one app store instead of uh, downloading another app store and hoping that there's no no mishaps with that uh, app, so and so forth. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I agree. I think it'd be be slick if you have to at least get the biggest ones right like uh, the biggest uh repos like uh, or distro you know app stores would make sense wherever we're not at yeah exactly be awesome if they would ship brave but um <laughs> with the os but you know it's for, dream for an, another conversation um yeah cool we've got seven minutes anybody else have any uh questions See, right. You know, let me ask you a couple on rewards. Um, okay. I noticed on the transparency page, no buybacks have been in since November. Are we expecting anything anytime soon or sales been low? Uh, sales been picking up. Let me check on where we're at. Sometimes it's like an issue of like, okay, we have a reserve, so we didn't need to buy more. But let me check on where we're at and get them to update it. Okay, awesome. And um, I know you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but the on-chain uh, payments, we still don't have an ETA, right? Except that it is currently in, well, we're about to start private testing or something like that. Yeah, we have staff testing. Uh, we're doing like a, a broader phase of testing with uh, with folks from community. And then it's going to be a, a phased release. So you'll see like rings of bigger and bigger groups of users brought on. Um, as we release it out, it's not going to be like a one and done um, type of thing, um, mainly because, and I saw like uh, Harold was mentioning too, like there's a bunch of anti fraud work going on. And so um, th these early test phases are important for that. Um, but uh, yeah, so so I don't have specific dates, but the, the testing process is rolling forward. All right, awesome. And uh, shoot. I guess let me give it a second and if someone else yeah, has no, a question. Cool. And, and for what it's worth, I mean, I think like some of the earliest folks we have test will be folks here, right? Like on the on the community. Um, and we will want you guys to be involved early because if you're here, you care and we want to get your feedback. All right. Um <laughs> Harold's a bunch of anti-fraud work with the all uh, all caps there. I knew that would be timely. Um, awesome. Uh, any other questions? Well, sure, I, guess... I got another one. Um, yeah. uh, in uh, Brave latest, uh, it, the I think it was like the iOS and Android are still not being updated in hmm. this web page. Uh, just only desktop. Uh, can we get that like uh, more 
more, uh, I guess, have a more timely update? Yeah, we should. I, I remember when you brought this up a while ago, I brought it up internally too, and I don't remember what they said, but I agree. Uh, can we update? Cool. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll also that. Good, good point. Any other things like that are, are welcome. Like, I'd love to make sure we're doing all this stuff. Um, C. Ray, you had another question, right? Well, I was going to let you know, um, I had reopened a topic on the crashing issue when Aaron okay. Yaka brought it up, and I tagged in some of the people that were having problems back in December, okay. um, and one of them said that, yes, it's still happening consistently. So um, I did tag you on that as well, okay, so cool. you'll see that topic. Yeah. Thank you, man. Carlos is here. How's Carlos going? What's up, everybody? How you doing, man? Good, good. Getting ready for Eat Denver with you. I, I know, was filling up, filling up Luke's calendar. <laughs> I know. You know. We're getting loaded up on stuff there. It'll be, it'll be yeah. cool. It's going to be a good stuff. time. I need activities and not illicit substances, but it's um. Yeah. It's well. Yeah. It's not illicit. It's not illicit in Denver. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's mile high in Denver. Um, uh, the uh, uh, any anything interesting um, going on in your side of the world that you feel like uh, uh, updating? Uh, yeah, um, you know, given the sentiment and the new bull market coming, I've actually gone on to help once again on the media side. So um, expanding our Web3 presence, I'm doing some some novel approaches to try to get some more, you know, Web3 advertisers going on Brave. And so far, we've had some positive responses. Sorry with the kid in the background. Um, but other than that, yeah, uh, trying to get Hedera into the wallet, trying to get some other uh, change to the wallet. Um, so I hopefully have some updates on that post East Denver, setting up a bunch of uh, a bunch of meetings around that as well. Cool. There was one other thing too. This whole just remind me of this whole uh, conversation we're having here. So uh, on the ad side too, um, there's some updates where uh, our team's been working on um, language localizing uh, ads manager or self serve platform for uh, Spanish and for Brazilian Portuguese and. The reason why is like, you know, Brave's a pretty distributed browser where we have a lot of users in different countries. Um, but in Latin America, South America, Central America, uh, especially we have like uh, quite a quite a big, a large amount of users. Um, and uh, so what we're trying to do is really language localize that down. And uh, Paolo, a couple other folks are helping us with that and then um, begin to market uh self-serve there and in brazil pretty aggressively um so uh that should be pretty awesome like uh going forward i think the translation work is pretty close on the ui and now we're doing like support documentation and then getting folks trained on the operational flow and all that good stuff but um all this is good for you know drumming up more volume more more uh opportunities to use bad incentives to get ad spend in and, and other things like that good stuff um cool yeah that's super that's super exciting um self-serving latam you know um when i was on the media side uh, originally and helping to get ads in latam it's uh, one of the things that people don't realize is that each country is its own beast and like it's uh it's hard to penetrate unless you have someone on the ground so self-service is going to open up a lot of potential for localized campaigns um so yeah I'm really excited about that um we, we're ready to hit the ground running we already look. We already have a partner that's going to touch, um, you know, our larger markets: uh, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, um, and um, and was Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, and Colombia. So uh, we're ready to go out the door with that. So the minute we're ready, we're ready to go. So thanks yeah. to uh, the partners helping that happen, make it happen. For sure, for sure. And then I think like we're also looking at other regions too. Um, so that we can kind of, you know, start rolling in more and more uh, global language support um, as as we go too. Uh, but yeah, all right. Well, we're at the top of the hour, so um, thank you everybody for for joining today. Um, we will be back one week from today, uh, next Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, see you all online and have a great week. Have a good one. See you guys, see everyone. Bye bye.